For more on the aviation industry, I'm joined by travel expert Mark Murphy. Mark, good yes. to have you. Great to be here. Mark, let's focus on KLM, mm -hmm. Air France, and um, their first profit uh, since 2008, their first net profit. Uh, it said it saved half a million dollars in fuel costs. Right. Costs of jet fuel falling by about 41% right. over that period. Is this obviously a trend that we can see expanded to the airline industry at large? Absolutely. And they're not giving any of those profits back to travelers. So everyone wants to know when the ticket prices are going to come down. And what the airlines have done a great job in is controlling capacity as demand has grown. So they've inched up capacity, but demand has kept up. And we're starting to see a little dip in airfares in 2016. We saw a little dip last year, but with all the other fees, it's remarkable that they haven't made a profit until this year. Well, Mark, what is remarkable is that with oil so low, this really hasn't been mm -hmm. passed on to consumers. Now, back when oil was at around $100 a barrel, the airline industry said we have to impose this fuel surcharge. Right. Well, at oil at $30 a barrel, why has that fuel what? surcharge not gone away? It's just another way to make money. So that's, that's all part of the strategy of um, unbundling fares, trying to make the customers pay on the back end. So when you're looking at transparency on the internet and looking at and shopping for fares, they lead with the lowest fare. Because what do you search? Lowest fare first and then descending order. I mean, ascending order. So it puts the cheapest price out there and it's very difficult for the consumer to calculate. The airlines are going to take that money and as long as they can and control the routes, which is the key thing, supply and demand and less competition on a lot of routes, that has allowed them to do well. The reason KLM has struggled is because of the proliferation of low-cost carriers in Europe, where we've seen a lot of them go away in the U.S., and 80% of the U.S. traffic is controlled only by four major carriers. We're going to bring it back to yeah. the somewhat of an oligopoly that we have in the U.S. In a, in a little bit, but I want to focus on another big trend, because... Sure. It hasn't just been fuel surcharges. You know, you get on an airplane, you get charged from everything from peanuts to pillows yes. on some of these uh, sure. airlines. Might, some, some suggest maybe using the bathroom. What a concept. I've heard that, which, which is, <laughs> which that is incredibly <laughs> disturbing. But the fact is they may because they all seem to be getting away with it. Now right. you get charged for an extra few centimeters in so-called premium economy. Yes, you do. Any way that this trend could be reversed, would it be changed if some of the other airlines went away with it to lure more customers, or is this just the new reality that we have to learn to deal with? All right, so this is the new reality until some carriers come in and start competing on routes. So, for instance, uh, I fly a lot between New York and Fort Lauderdale, and there's carriers that compete for those passengers, so you get a little better pricing. In Philadelphia, the prices were a lot higher when it was really just U.S. Air serving that market. Now JetBlue stepped in a few months ago. I've seen fares go down dramatically. So it's, they're taking smaller steps because what happened with the airlines is they aggressively went in, they created these fare wars, they drove the smaller carriers or tried to drive the smaller carriers out of those markets, and that brought down fares for everyone. Those days are gone. Well, you mentioned this earlier, mm -hmm. a somewhat of an oligopoly. Without is there just too much consolidation in the airline industry? There was a time when all of the bankruptcies forced all of these mergers and acquisitions, and mm -hmm. now, as you say, about 70% of domestic travel is controlled in the U.S., by four airlines. Yeah, yeah. Should regulators or the government be stepping in here? So I think what's going to happen is, again, things return to normal when you have more competition. So make it easier for the low-cost carriers to come in and compete, open up slots at airports. There are things that the government can control, but in this society, a capitalist society, you have to be able to allow competition to win out. If customers are going to pay those fees and continue to fill planes, you are not going to see a disruption in terms of those fares. Fares today are where they're at. They're going to go down slightly coming into this year. But from the rise that they've had over the last six years, not a big drop. All right, uh, let's change direction sure. a little bit and talk about something that maybe is not going to be fun for mm -hmm. the airline industry. And this is an agreement about carbon dioxide right. emissions. Uh, not binding as of yet, Correct. but for the first time that there has been uh, an international mm -hmm. draft, what are the details? Where do things stand? So, so basically what they're saying is we're all agreeing that any airplanes that come online new after 2028, they have to submit to these new rules where depending on the type of aircraft, it could be a drop in emissions from zero. 0% drop, up to about 11%. So we're not going to see an impact because most of these planes can fly 25 or 30 years. So planes that are in service are going to have no impact. So those planes that just came so online... So this only applies to new planes? New planes coming on in 2028 and then in 2023 for certain aircraft. So it's a modified two-step process. So 
we're really not going to see any benefit from that. But here's what I would look at. Competition and pricing for fuel is going to drive innovation in the airline industry. Right. It drove innovation with the Dreamliner, all of that. That's bringing down fuel consumption and lowering CO2. Mark, I very quickly want to yeah. touch on the Zika virus. Sure. It spreads to about 25 countries now. Correct, yep. How are airlines dealing with this? So airlines are being flexible with customers traveling to Latin America and the Caribbean. So if you've if you're pregnant, if you're concerned, they'll allow you to cancel, they'll give you a full refund. Cruise lines are doing the same thing. What passengers have to think about is if you're not pregnant, you should really feel comfortable going there. If you're not planning on getting pregnant, you should feel comfortable going there. 80% of people who get the virus don't even know they have it. Right. So I think, you know, it's us media folks. We were scaring some of these people, and it's not to me from flying to the Dominican Republic. Good for you. Ago. All right, we're going to have to leave it there. Thank you so much, travel expert Mark Murphy.